These graduates have just graduated a time, but they're launching into a brand new season. You need to always understand that there's patience in the race. Right? Jesus had something in his heart, a vision in his heart, and the vision that he had when he ran his race was us. Now we need to have him. Yeah, for the joy that was set before him. We were the joy that was set before him. So he could endure anything. We need to fall in love with Jesus again. Let me say that. We need to fall in love with Jesus again. Because when we love him, we'll endure anything. We'll go through anything. And we won't question his goodness. We won't say, where is God? Because we'll know he's right here. Amen? So we're going to have run the race with vision. We're going to run the race with patience. And finally, we're going to have the grace to run, to win, to finish, to run until it's done. We're not going to give up along the way. How many know some people that started strong, but they fell off along the way? Come on, it, it should be a warning to all of us. People that were passionate, people that were pursuing God, and now they're lost. Why? Because without a vision, people perish. We're going to have grace to run the race until we're done. I'm going to read you Hebrews chapter 12 in uh, the message translation, the message paraphrase. And it says this, do you see what this means? All these pioneers, this is the cloud of witness, all these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it, strip down, start running and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed that exhilarating finish in and with God. He could have put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. In this all-out match against sin, others have suffered far worse than you to say nothing of what Jesus went through, all that bloodshed. So stop feeling sorry for yourselves. <laughs> this is my kind of message. <laughs> I need to hear this. Just a couple more scriptures. Acts chapter 20. We're gonna, how many want to finish? How many want to finish well? I mean, some of you are, st are just starting out, but I'm telling you, I want to run my entire life. Bishop Hammond has said, as long as there's breath in my body, there's purpose for me in this earth. 87 years old, still traveling around, preaching, praying, prophesying. He's not going to quit. He's not going to stop. He's not going to give up. He's not going to fail of the grace of God. We are going to keep our eyes on the prize and keep going. Amen? Acts chapter 20. Verse 22, and now, everybody say now. Compelled by the Spirit, I'm, Paul said, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what's going to happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. A lot of things press in on us. A lot of things try to get our attention. But can we keep our eyes on what's important? Can we keep our eyes on the Spirit? Can we keep our eyes on Jesus? Can we keep our eyes on what he's spoken to us to do and not give up? Whatever you're facing, don't give up. I, I heard Bishop say one time, if you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep going till you get to the other side, okay? Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, again, written from a Roman prison cell. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. I want you to stand up, if you don't mind. We're going to keep our eyes on the prize. Let me just say, there may be people that aren't here today that will hear this message later or people that you know that need to hear this because they're just feeling like they're on thin ice. Don't quit. Don't give up. I want to close by reading a little poem that I came across years ago. And if you don't mind, just, just shut your eyes because I just believe the Lord will just speak to you and impart to you. It's called The Race 
It's by D.H. Groberg. I read it around here about every five or six years, probably when I need it, okay? <laughs> it says this. Quit. Give up. You're beaten. They shout at me and plead. There's just too much against you now. This time you can't succeed. And as I started to hang my head in front of failure's face, my downward fall is broken by the memory of a race. And hope refills my weakened will as I recall that scene. For just the thought of that short race rejuvenates my being. A children's race, young boys, young men, now I remember well. Excitement, sure, but also fear. It wasn't hard to tell. They all lined up so full of hope. Each thought to win the race or tie for first or if not that, at least take second place. And fathers watched from off the side, each cheering for his son. And each boy hoped to show his dad that he would be the one. The whistle blew and off they sped as if they were on fire. To win, to be the hero there was each boy's desire. And one boy in particular, his dad was in the crowd, was running near the lead and thought, my dad will be so proud. But as he speeded down the field across the shallow dip, the little boy who thought to win lost his step and slipped. Trying hard to catch himself, his arm flew out to brace. And mid the laughter of the crowd, he fell flat on his face. So down he fell and with him hope, he couldn't win it now. S embarrassed, sad, he only wished he'd disappear somehow. But as he fell, his dad stood up and showed his anxious face, which to the boy so clearly said, get up and win the race. He quickly rose, no damage done, behind a bit, that's all, and ran with all his mind and might to make up for that fall. So anxious to restore himself, to catch up and to win, his mind went faster than his legs. He slipped and fell again. He wished he had quit before with only one disgrace. I'm hopeless as a runner now. I shouldn't try to race. But in the laughing crowd, he searched and found his father's face. That steady look that said again, get up and win the race. So he jumped up to try again, 10 yards behind the last. If I'm going to gain those yards, he thought, I've got to run real fast. Exceeding everything he had, he regained eight or 10. But trying so hard to catch the lead, he slipped and fell again. Defeat. He lay there silently, a tear dropped from his eye. There's no sense running anymore. Three strikes, I'm out. Why try? The will to rise had disappeared. All hope had fled away. So far behind, so error prone, a loser all the way. I've lost, so what's the use, he thought. I'll live with my disgrace. But then he thought about his dad whom soon he'd have to face. Get up, an echo sounded low. Get up and take your place. You were not meant for failure here. Get up and win the race. With borrowed will, get up, it said. You haven't lost it all. For winning is no more than this to rise each time you fall. So up he rose to win once more and with a new commit he resolved that win or lose, at least he wouldn't quit. So far behind the others now, the, more, the most he'd ever been. Still, he gave it all he had and ran as though to win. Three times he'd fallen, stumbling. Three times he rose again. Too far behind to hope to win, still he ran to the end. They cheered the winning runner as he crossed the line first place. Head high and proud and happy, no falling no disgrace. But when the fallen crossed the finish line, last place, the crowd gave him the greater cheer for finishing the race. And even though he came in last with head bowed low, unproud, you would have thought he'd won that race to listen to the crowd. And to his dad, he sadly said, I didn't do so well. 
To me, you won, his father said. You rose each time you fell. And now when things seem dark and hard and difficult to face, the memory of that little boy helps me in my race. For all of life is like that race with ups and downs and all. And all you have to do to win is rise each time you fall. Quit, give up, you're beaten. They still shout in my face. But another voice within me says, get up and win the race. I want you to lift your hands up all over this place. Father, I know that there are people here, Lord, that have that that poem resonates with, Father. They felt like maybe they failed. Not once, not twice, maybe several times. The amazing thing about your grace, Lord, is that it is amazing grace. You pick us up every single time. You give us the ability to just get up, get our eyes back on the goal, and finish the race that you've given us to run. You didn't say we had to run it perfect. You just said we had to run to the end. And so, Father, I pray for each and every person in this room today, God, that you would just shower your amazing grace upon them. Whatever difficulty they're facing, God, whatever challenge is in front of them, Lord, give them, give them the feet of a runner, God. Give them the passion of one that doesn't give up. Give them the ability, Father God, to, to run until they're done, to run all the way through, Father God and to accomplish every part of destiny and purpose that you've laid out for them. And if they got off track, if they took some side rows, some rabbit trails, Lord, put them back on track. Put our hearts back on track, Lord. Put our minds back on track and put our spirit man back on track to embrace everything you're calling us to in the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.